Hi everyone, Ernie Tech here. I'm going to apologize right off the bat because I don't think the audio in this video is going to be as good as I like. And the reason is, is because to be able to hear the key and the tones, I'm going to use the microphone that's inside my cell phone. Uh, usually I, I use a set of headphones. Uh, it sounds a lot better with my voice, which if you've watched my videos, you know I have a raspy nasally voice. Um, it's my trademark. Anyway, what I want to do today is talk about the Ziagu, and I've got it pronounced just right now, the Ziagu G90's keyer, the built-in keyer function. It's actually very nice. Now, we know that all new radios have keyers built in, most of them anyway, and this is no different, but it does give you a lot of options, and it does allow you to set it for a really nice sounding fist, as it were. Okay, it's very simple to do in this radio. Everything you need to do with the keyer is with one button. Isn't that great? Versus pushing functions and all that stuff. All right, there's a number of parameters. Let's go through them, and the parameters control how it sounds when you're fooling around with the paddles. By the way, I want to have a shout-out to CWMorse.us. This little 3D printed paddle that I bought through Gigaparts for like $36, $37 is just bonkers. 3D printed by a couple of people down in Texas. I think it's a father and son team. And they know what they're doing, I'm telling you. I have a 3D printer and I've never reached the quality of this little thing. So you might want to check that out. I don't know them. I don't get any money. I don't get keys. I get nothing. But I do like to acknowledge when someone makes a good product, this is a good keyer for 35 bucks. Yee, I like it. All right, back to the business at hand, the key button here. So when I press the key button, things change up here. Notice up in here, it says speed. It says MLR auto mode, QSK, QSK time and ratio. And it goes back to the bandwidth. What do these things mean? Well, if you want to use this as a code practice device. You don't want to transmit. You just want to get used to using the paddles. Press the key button and keep pressing it until you get to QSK. Remember in the Ziagu, everything's changed by fooling around with the tuning knob for the most part. You also have this guy. Never mind. QSK off. It keeps it from sending out, from transmitting. That's what you want. So you press the key button Enough times until you get to QSK, you turn it off, a little CW in red shows up there, you're good to go, you're not bothering anybody, you're talking to yourself, which for me is often the only person <laughs> I get to talk to. All right, so let's play with this thing. So right now, you can hear the paddles. That's about 12 words a minute. I'm not good with CW. I've been a ham for a long, long time, and CW has always been my worst my worst nightmare, and now I want to learn how to do it properly. So 12 words a minute, I'm, I'm screaming along here. When you go to the 12 word, you can actually change it on the fly. So watch this. You can make it faster, and you can make it slower. A lot of these options are actually available while you're paddling. Which is kind of neat. So let's leave it at 12 words per minute. What do the rest of these things do? Well, MLR is simple. It means that if you are in man, you don't have a keyer anymore. It is simply acting as a straight key. See? So each of these paddles is acting as though it's a straight key. The keyer is taken out of line. That's all there is to it. That's what man means. Also, you notice that if you don't do something in a short amount of time, often this radio will just flip back to wherever it was at. I don't like that. I just wish it would leave it where it is, but what can you do? So that's what MLR means. When you change it to L, that means you're left-handed. So um, that's now dashes on the left. If I change it to R, it's dots on the left. I'm right-handed. That means auto R is what you want. Automatic, it's a keyer, and it's for a right-hander. That was pretty straightforward, a little mystified, but, you know, no big deal. Let's get to what it means to be mode A and mode B. Well, mode A and mode B are kind of cool. This has to do with the iambic nature of the keyer. 
And it's sort of like how um, iambic pentameter works in poetry. How does it flow? And I'm really bad at explaining this, but I've been doing a little research, and what I've understood is that mode B represents like um, the old accu keyers were like back in the day. And mode A is the more traditional Curtis keyer. So in mode B, if I hold both paddles down, hear it? When I let go, it actually adds a little, the next dash or dot. See it? Did, uh, did. When I'm in mode A, oh, why does this thing have to do that? We need a firmware update, boys. It just stops. Now, I'm holding both paddles down at the same time. And when I let go of it in mode A, it just stops. But when I go into mode B and I do the same thing, hear a little dit on the end, the extra one? That's the difference. It seems minor, but apparently if you're a good CW operator, it's a big deal. It has to do with the flow, and it has to do with how many hits of the paddle you have to have to get the, uh, the, the send the CW. I kind of like mode B. I'm learning how to use mode B, the old uh, AccuKey or the iambic nature. I'm going to leave it in mode B. Your mileage may vary. Did I, did I gloss over that too quickly? If I did, it's because I'm still kind of trying to figure it out myself. All right, so MLR auto means whether it's left-handed, right-handed, or just a key. Mode A Mode B is simply whether it acts like a Curtis keyer or an Accu keyer. The Curtis keyer being that it stops when you stop. The Accu keyer being that it finishes up with the next dot or dash. And that only makes a difference if you're holding both paddles down at the same time. And why would you do that? Well, if you hold both paddles down at the same time, you're going to get a certain kind of effect. Let me show you. So that's actually holding both paddles at the same time. I'm not doing anything. That's what it sounds like. If I go to mode B, sounds the same way until I let go of it. It adds a little dat, a little dit to the end of it. Is it meaningful? I don't know. QSK is off. That means you're not transmitting. If it's on, it means you're acting full break-in. And that's where the QSK time comes in. That's the amount of time between you letting go of the paddle or the dot or dash completing, and then you hear what's going on on the air. You got that again? So it's full break-in. You don't have to switch like we all used to do in the novice days from transmit to standby. You hear what's going on in between your dots and dashes. But you don't want it instantaneously because it would be actually sort of confusing. So there's a little delay, and the QSK delay is that delay. All right. I beat that horse. All right. And the ratio. What is the ratio? Well, let's see. If a dit lasts, let's just say, N as a number, the DA lasts N times the ratio. So if the ratio is 3, that means the DA, the dash, whatever you want to call it, is 3 times longer than the DIT. You got that? That's what it means. So what? Let me see if I can show you that, how that sounds. So right now, the ratio is 3 to 1. So each one of them little DITs is X or N amount long. And that, if you had a really great ear, that means that it's three times as long. But if I change that, see, that's what I don't like about that. They keep flipping back to where you left off. I didn't like that. Please change that next time. All right. So if I like change the ratio down to, let's say, the lowest ratio, too. Watch this. See how short the dashes are? See how they get longer? Uh-huh. That's all it is. It's the ratio of time, the dot to the dash. How long's a dot? That stays the same. How long's a dash? It's a multiple based upon the ratio. 
They set it at three to one. I like three to one. It's uh, it feels right. I'm not going to change that. So that's pretty much it. That's the keyer on the Zigu G90. It is simply a matter of plugging in your keyer or your straight key, uh, pressing the key button, accessing the different modes or different parameters each time you press it. When you press it, you change the parameters by using the tuning dial. And at the end of changing all the parameters, you go back to your bandwidth. That's it. Okay. Alrighty. I uh, hope that was helpful. I hope that was a little explanatory. Is it intuitive? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, I still like the radio, and I'm having a good time with it, and we got more stuff coming up. Please subscribe, and thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.